Patrick wanted to know if you ever still drink Dr. Pepper before workouts anymore. Oh, gosh. This is a story. So, <laughs> Welcome to My Got A Podcast. I'm Jim Wood. In this episode, John Powell and I are joined by Georgia's starting right guard, Tate Ratledge. This is the first of our new 2023 player interview series. We think everyone will enjoy getting to hear what Tate has to say, and we hope you feel like you got to know him a little better. I know we did. Special thanks to our presenting sponsor, Oxyatan, as well as the Classic City Collective for making this episode possible. Now, it's time to clock in with Tate Ravage. All right, so we got a we got a special one today here on my my got a podcast. So uh, you know, John and I as usual, but uh, we got a special special guest, uh, a podcaster in his own right. Uh, got to go check out Real Talk for sure. Uh, but uh, Tate Ravage in the house of my got a podcast. Tate, welcome to the podcast. I appreciate y'all having me. Yeah, absolutely, a- absolutely excited to have you on. Absolutely. Yeah. So we, you know. Uh, Working this through Oxy Time and, and Classic City Collective, uh, we're able to set this up for us. But um, I know Tate, we were hoping even just you know just to kind of get to know you a little bit more. Um, I think it's been great to be able to hear you talk on uh, on, on your podcast mm-hmm. and maybe just get into a little bit there. I know John, I think you wanted to kick us off a little bit. Yeah, I just wanted to get a, a background on you. Like, what's like what's your Georgia story for those that are, might not be familiar? So, like. Like what, what brought you to Georgia? What, 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 uh, you know, what, what's your story? Um, so I'm originally from Chattanooga, Tennessee. I was, I was born there, moved down cause my dad got a coaching job. So we moved to Rome and I started off at a school called our Murchie. It's a public school up there. And then ended up getting moved to uh, Darlington, which is a small private school up there. And I, that's where I spent from seventh grade to my senior year, uh, played ball there, played a couple other sports, really enjoyed it. It's a great place. But I think they did a really good job of uh, helping me get to where I am today. But really, my story of getting here, the recruiting process was was I tried to end it as fast as possible because I, I wasn't a huge fan of it. I <laughs> uh, got tired of talking to people. Uh, but so I ended up coming down to Georgia and Tennessee, and I ended up choosing Georgia because I um, love the atmosphere here. Um, I love the way the team felt when I was around them. It was a real, real family atmosphere to me. And as a place that if I didn't play football, I could see myself living for four years. So I think that was a big part of it for me, um, trying to find somewhere that if I wasn't playing football, would I be happy there? Um, I think it's a phenomenal place to get my education. And um, those are really the main reasons I ended up here. Who was uh, like, who was your like lead recruiter back then? Like Uh, coach Pittman. Okay. Okay. Nice. Oh. <laughs> love, love Coach Pittman. We're we're big fans of Coach Pittman as well. <laughs> as most Georgia people are, I feel like. I feel like it feel like it's hard not to be. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seems seems like a guy we we just kind of want to go have a beer with. But <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I know. Um, like it, it's cool to hear. I mean, imagine growing up in Tennessee early, like as a young kid, you know, probably wasn't Georgia on your mind so much, so to speak. But uh, whole dad's it. out of family diehard Tennessee fan. So I, yeah. I kind of got raised that way. But once <laughs> I started figuring out football was in my future, it kind of it got put to the side and uh, had to think about what was best for me. Yeah. Yeah. That I mean, I, I can't relate to that, but I can imagine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so you know, I mentioned that like that, that you have a podcast, and I I guess like just on that note, like you know, there's so much talk about NIL, NIL and college football and how that's changing everything. But like one of the benefits of it that I've seen is like getting to hear players perspective. Cause I feel like that, like you guys, you know, I mean, you would get out in front of the media maybe once a week at max. Right. But then now like, it's really giving you guys a way to have a, a, a platform and be able to get your stories out there. For example. Um, I don't know, like, what is it, what is NIL meant to you? Um, I think it's, a way for players or athletes all over the country, no matter what the sport is to kind of uh, get what they've earned to per se. Mm. I think a lot of people for every sport would agree that it's a huge time of commitment. Like we don't have time to go out and get a job here and make money this way or that way. So I think this has really helped a lot of people and helped even more people's families 
Mm -hmm. And um, I think it, I think it's a great way for athletes to, like you said, get themselves out there, uh, kind of get their story out there and let people know them uh, further than just a football player. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah totally. It's been great. It's been great listening to you guys. Like I, I told Jim, like listening to listening to the players talk on podcasts and all those things, like that's been super insightful. It's also been like, it, it reveals a little bit about like what, what life is like, like even, even some of the players are on TikTok, you know, N Nazir Stackhouse, you know, his, his TikTok is, his TikToks are, are, are great. It just gives a, a different perspective, which, you know, maybe you can speak a little bit about that. Like what's, what's a day in the life like for, for a player? Um, always starts off with, you gotta be at breakfast. So you gotta, you gotta eat. Um, then you have class, just depending on your class schedule, you could be from class from eight to 12. You could have breaks in there. You could have class at nine, a class at 11. So it really just depends on your schedule. And then after that, it's, it's pretty much strictly football. Um, we're coming in, getting lunch, uh, treatment. So we try to get, try to get treatment throughout the day whenever you have time. And then it's really, uh, meetings. We meet a lot, watch a lot of film. Um, see what we can fix, see what we can pick up other teams are doing, stuff like that, uh, trying to get ahead of, ahead of the game. And then it, it's practice. And then usually watching film after practice just on your own. Um, I know me, me said, Ernest, a, a good bit of our offensive line, we go in every week after practice and watch, watch probably, we try to watch two, three games. Um, mm -hmm. The other team just, just trying to see what's happening. But it, it's it's pretty full. And then after that, you – if you have ranking or something like that, you got to go uh, take care of your academics, which um, I've been lucky enough to get out of that. So I don't have to worry about that anymore, but <laughs> the freshman, I mean, they're, they're in is a freshman in ranking all day. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I, I mean, so just so you know, I mean, like John and I, we went to Georgia, but long time ago, it didn't have anything like your schedule. So I can't imagine. <laughs> I can't imagine. Yeah. <laughs> we get a day off and I'm sitting here. I'm like, I, I don't know what to do with myself. It's like, I, I'm usually on like such a strict schedule and it's like the time that we're supposed to be at practice or something. I'll be sitting here and like my heart starts beating. Like it feels like I'm supposed to be doing something, but I'm not. Are you missing a meeting? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that'll go through your head every now and uh, yeah that's great yeah that's like man that's like the version of like the nightmare like i still have the the nightmare that i'm in college and like i forgot to drop a class and the final was coming up so just fyi that that never goes away <laughs> yeah seriously <laughs> especially especially during during like camp and stuff like that when you're not in like school and it's a and it's a strict schedule every day and there's so much stuff going on throughout the day during camp you get a little bit of free time you're like okay i'm gonna go catch a little bit of a nap and uh, you, you hope you don't wake up too late and miss a meeting. <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, That's man. Hilarious. Uh, so with, do you have, with your podcast over past couple seasons, is there, was there like a favorite uh, interview you conducted? Um, I really enjoyed the one where we had the whole offensive line on there. It might nice. be a little bit biased, but we had a lot of fun on that one. Um, <laughs> a lot of genuine conversations. The one where he had the tight ends on is also up there, one of my favorites. Um, we had one of my good friends. His name's Logan Crosby on. He's an up-and-coming country singer. That one was really good. And then we oh, had – trying to think who else. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever had – we've had one that I'm like, dang, like that wasn't very good. <laughs> They're all interesting. <laughs> and I think it's – especially with yeah. our teams, you, you, you seem to learn something new about them, even though you feel like you know them to a certain extent, but you just learn more and more about them. I – I'm yeah, that's interesting you say that because I I've I've picked up on that because I mean I'm obviously learning like everything, but it is cool to see really it seems to happen like every time you guys mm -hmm. all, you know, regardless of who's on, you guys seem to learn new things about each other, which I think is again, I just think it's cool. And again, like I feel like that's it's it seems like a new thing, right? Like these things wouldn't be happening. I don't know, maybe you'd just be hanging out playing video games and it happens anyways, but uh the <laughs> fact that we get to witness it too is is cool. It gives us insight into it. So definitely. Cool. Um, so we've got, uh, we got, you know, bye week this week, but got Florida, Florida coming up next week. Um, you know, something that we've talked about a lot is, you know, conference realignment, expansion, everything that's going on. And I know like there was talk of like Auburn game, you know, is that going to be played annually? Uh, I think we're kind of assuming Florida still will continue to be, but it may not remain in Jacksonville. I don't know. So ha having played down there, was that? That's what I've heard. That it might not be in Jacksonville. It might be a home and away thing now. 
Yeah. So I don't know, like how, how does that make you feel as someone who's played down there? Um, I think it's a, it's a great tradition uh, personally, but I also do like the idea of going home and away just because I love playing at Sanford stadium. Like it's, it's unmatched every, every Saturday, no matter who we're playing, what time that place is packed and it's loud. And um, we, we always talk about it. Like uh, your opportunities to play there, they, they get, it gets shorter and shorter every time. So just trying to take all those in and you always want an extra one. Yeah. Um, I, I can relate to that as a fan as well. It's like, man, every, every single one of these is, is great. Every single one is, is special. 100 percent it's a great atmosphere yeah i will say and like i think for john and i like you know the swamp and and i mean for you too date right like it is the one place none of us have been mm -hmm. <laughs> um so it would be cool to cool to experience that as well um, did you ever go when you were a recruit to, to watch I, any I games went, there i went once and i went to see them um play south carolina i think it was and i think i, th I thought it was a pretty cool stadium um, just from being on the field, be able to look at it, it it's unique, uh, especially with the big uh, the swamp on the uh, mm -hmm. in, in big letters. I thought that was pretty cool, but I only got to go down there once because it was a farther drive. Like everywhere that I was interested in was two hours from Rome, so it was really easy for me to get to. So right. I got a chance to go down there, and I went down there, and I, I thought it was I thought it was a cool stadium. Do you uh, you get you have a favorite cocktail party memory for yourself? Um. It's not really a memory because it, it it's almost like it happens every time. It's kind of weird. So mm -hmm. you go out for warm ups, and this, there's not really anybody. There's not many people in the stadium, and right. like it's weird. And then <laughs> you go back in after warm ups, and you come back out, and it's packed. So it, it's kind of <laughs> like a shock. And uh, I mean, which is understanding. I heard the tailgating's great th down there, but um, <laughs> we can get through yeah, here. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's definitely it's definitely different. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, it is, it is unique. Um, I, I, I hate, I would hate to lose that, but I, I get, I don't know. We, we kind of waffle. I'm, I'm more of the, uh, keep it there. I think John, you're, you're kind of okay either way, but I'm a, I'm a hybrid person, but uh, you know, it, kind of in the vein of what you were talking about with traditions, Tay, like as, as we move to the, you know, the, the future of, of college football, like it feels like that traditions are are getting evaporated at a, at a quick rate. So I'm, I, if I were, if you were to put me on a dime for it, I would say I, I would err on the side of keeping the traditions, like, you know, keeping things like Georgia, Florida and in Jacksonville and like protect the Auburn game at all costs, you know, kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I think I'm with you on that. I'm, I'm a big fan of traditions. I think that's what makes, everywhere unique so, yeah uh, yeah I, I think it's what makes college football unique you know yeah. compared i mean obviously compared to the nfl but really i feel like it's one of the more unique sports we have in the country so um all right so one more cocktail uh party kind of kind of sort of flavored thing uh so one of the things we like to talk about tate is is uniforms and i know like our, our sense is Kirby doesn't seem to like the alternate uniforms. Have mm -hmm. you seen the picture of Kirby wearing the black pants in 1998 cocktail party? We have, but okay. we don't necessarily give them. We don't, we don't necessarily talk about that as much. We talk about the white cleats that he wore when he was here. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think all of us would, would like to wear white cleats once, but um, I think the white cleats. The white cleats. Uh, I didn't, I didn't see know. that coming. <laughs> um, we, we talk about the white cleats every time because we're like, when we wore our white jerseys, like white cleats would look really good. And well, somebody's nice. like, Coach Smart wore them when he was here. So it was like, we, and they showed us the picture. We we're like, hmm. We'll have to <laughs> that up. So somebody, I think somebody said something to him about it. Uh, what, what, what is what is his take? Like when, when you guys talk to him or try to convince him to to let y'all do certain things, like does he does he weigh in? Like does he give you the time of day on it? Like what, what's what's the? Uh, I think it, I think it's more just on the page of keeping the main thing the main thing, just not focusing on outside things yeah. or or other things. Just I think I think that's what he's into. That that doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> It all surprised me at all. <laughs> but then you have like these one-offs, like the Mississippi State game where we had the black jerseys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, were you? Because that was your your red shirt year, right? Tate, yes, twenty twenty. Yeah. Okay. So did did you suit up in either of those alternate uniforms? I, I was. Um, you said what? 
did you suit up so like because I, I, re- I remember you played i knew you played like auburn at a minimum because I, I remember you, you did play you get did get to play as a freshman i, I was i was there um, okay i don't know about the sideline but i was there okay, uh, okay. yeah i think the black jerseys look good um yeah. but personally my favorite is our is our white jerseys silver, yeah. silver the silver britches i think that that's my favorite i'm i'm a fan of white yeah okay yeah yeah it it is it is a good look and we've we've won some uh big games in those so <laughs> we've, we've we've wondered we've wondered like uh on the fan side of things like do the recruits all come through and they get all the different variations like there's a white helmet and stuff like do, are they genuinely bummed when they don't get to wear those those things or is that uh, is that a factor at all <laughs> I, I don't i don't think it's a factor i think they kind of know what what's going to happen when we get here but okay like i said i th- i love our i love our uniforms i think like we brought it back well, to, yeah going back to tradition don't mm-hmm. change it and um i'm a big fan of them yeah yeah i think it was when we were in school when we went back to the single white stripe down the helmet because you know we had the black stripe in the in the middle down in the late 90s and it kind of went back there um all right cool well hey i I mentioned that we had a mutual acquaintance we want to hit a couple of a couple of questions on these so one of them was actually i'll start with this one because this one actually you could if you dig through the media guide you would find this and if you're a listener if folks listen to your podcast, you have mentioned this, but I'm going to phrase this this way. Who's the better punter, Brett Thorson or Tate Radledge? <laughs> um, I understand to, you were the high school punter. I'm going to have to give it to Brett, but I think doing it was more impressive. Yes. I mean, nice. I, 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 had, I had knee braces on. Um, I think I, I netted I, like a 41-yard average, so... I'm yes. gonna give it more impressive to me, but I think he's a better putter for sure. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. That's amazing. You guys should have had a punt off on when he was on. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think. I think pre foot surgery, I could have taken him. I don't know about now. Okay. Oof. Okay. Oof. I like it. I like it. Uh, there's, um, some, there's some debate on whether or not the the UGA quarterbacks uh, are despise the the punters. Oh yeah, yeah. They don't uh, like Australians. Oh, I like Australian punters. I I do too. I always I I love Brett, but I always tell him I hope he doesn't step on the field. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. Uh, Confirmed. Love it. Uh, okay, so the other one, the fun year one was uh, Patrick wanted to know if you ever still drink Dr Pepper before workouts anymore. Oh gosh, <laughs> <laughs> this is a story. So, <laughs> um. Woke up one morning, was thirsty. We had a morning workout. First thing I grabbed a hold of was a Dr. Pepper. At that time, I thought I was invincible. Body could withstand anything. And that was until our big thing was running hills throughout Rome. So we okay. would go to hills and run them. Well, I just happened to get halfway up one and catch a full body cramp. <laughs> and uh, they had to pick me up at this time. I was probably like three thirty, So I was a lot, I was bigger than I am now. They had to pick me up, put me in the back of a truck and hold me down. Cause I was like, I was tossing and turning, like just cramping everywhere. And then oh I, I didn't have a shirt on. I was sweating. So I had, I had pine straw and dirt just covering <laughs> my body. And uh, there was a kid's camp going on at the time. So when they got me back to the campus, um, a group of kids were walking by. And I got out of the truck. They picked me up out of the truck and apparently like I screamed or something. And it and it scared the little kids so bad they like started running from me. <laughs> it's a Sasquatch. <laughs> it, it ended up washing me down with a hose. Um and just dropping me in the ice bath and bringing me a uh uh bunch of stuff to drink. But yeah, that was the last time I ever drank Dr. Pepper for a workout. <laughs> Uh, he, he, good was, he was one of them holding uh, me down in the bed of the truck. I'm pretty sure he caught a couple knees while we were back there. Yeah, that's the your your version matches up with what I heard from Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. I, I appreciate the Dr Pepper though. Or, I, I, I am also a Dr Pepper fan. <laughs> <laughs> I am too. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, well, Tate, I know we we mentioned early on um, just about the you know, we, there's a collaboration going on right now between Oxia Time, who's you know our presenting sponsor, and then Classic City Collective. So shout out to both for uh, you know working with us to 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 make this happen. Um, and uh, I know you're also uh, involved with Oxia Time a bit as well through the, through the collective. I am, I am. I'm a big fan of those their watches. They're, they're extremely nice. Um, I've actually every time I've worn one got at least 
a compliment or, or a compliment up to, I've gotten up to like six compliments every time I wore them. Yeah. Uh, uh, they're definitely really nice watches. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So um, if you want to see one of the watches that, that Tate is talking about, uh, you can head over to classic Sydney collective.com uh, click the shop link and then time pieces. And that's where you'll see the uh, limited edition uh, time pieces that if you purchase them, they also come with a, a presentation box signed by Kirby Smart. So be sure to go check that out. All right, let's see. A uh, couple more things for you, Tate, and we'll, we'll let you get out of here. Um, we've got, uh, we, we, have a, we have a buddy of ours, friend of the show on the podcast, uh, Coach Trill Bill, and we, we asked him if he had any questions for you. So we, we gave him a little inside sources that we were going to have you on. So he had a few things for us. Um, what is, uh, what's the team's go-to post-game locker room celebration song this season? You guys got a, a song you're vibing with? Gosh. I don't, I don't think there's just one necessarily. Hmm. Coach Smart, Coach Smart gets done with his, his speech and the, there goes the music and it's just, <laughs> just whatever they're, uh, they got queued up, but I don't, I don't think it's really anything specific. Okay. There was, okay. there was a point this season, I think that you had tweeted about where the team kind of went, went nuts on the sideline on, on a song like ski or something like that. Oh yeah. 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 That that song got played out really fast. That was, <laughs> that, was that was short lived. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough uh nice uh okay so for you is there any like nfl player that you kind of like look up to as far as linemen around like your game um modeling my game after um i definitely have to go with uh quentin wood um quentin nelson okay. uh, i think he's just violent and uh he he plays hard and uh, he's really fun to watch and then I, I, trying to model my game after is uh, also I'd, I have to say Trent Williams. I mean, he's the best of the best. I mean, it's, it's I think as an offensive lineman, it's kind of hard to watch him play and not be like, mm -hmm. I, I want to be able to do that. But um, yeah. I think both of them are extremely, extremely good players. You got any, um, any former Georgia players that have come through that you're, uh, you're closest with? Probably, probably the guys that were in our room and that we went against every day in practice, practice. Um, like the uh the Vontes, the JDs, the uh Jamaris, the Schaefer, the Schaefers. Um, I mm -hmm. think that's just when you're going against each other every single day and with each other every single day, I think that's just a natural bond you build. So uh, it's always exciting to see those guys back. Nice. That's awesome. Nice. I've got to ask I got I have to ask this question, Tate. Um, like what what does it feel like to win the national championship? Mm -hmm. As a player, like what did it feel like to you? I mean, I don't, I don't think it's set in until the next day, really, because it's something you dream of for so long, and it's that, it's that one goal that never really changes. Like, yeah, you want to go play college football, um, that was a goal, but you never knew where. But and that changed. Like, I went, I ended up coming here. Um, but a national championship, I think, is on every kid that wants to play football is is in their view for their future, and um, to win that, it was kind of like a a win for my younger self. Mm. If that makes sense. Is that something that like I always wanted as a child? Um, just know as soon as I knew what it was, I was like, I want to do that. And and being able to do that and being able to part up, being able to be a part of it is 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 more amazing than I think I can even put into words. It's it's, it's surreal. It still is to me, kind of. Do people come up to you and like say thank you and things like that? Like, you know what I mean? Because there's not just it's not just a national championship for Georgia fans. It's it was, you know. <laughs> demons be gone was the play call right like there really was so yeah we, every now and then we get a we get a couple thank you thank yous and i think that means a lot too just knowing it, it it's something bigger than us that was uh, my son my oh. son is watching <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah definitely i think it, it, it's something bigger than us i mean the first one had been what 40 years so yeah, yeah. that's something our fan base has been waiting on for for so long and then for us to to be able to win two of those um i think is is awesome it, like i said it, it's it's bigger than us yeah follow-up question what does it feel like to win two national championships <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, the first one it was i i didn't i didn't i didn't play in the first one i ended up getting hurt that year right yeah, uh, yeah. um so that one it was it was just unreal to experience it um 
because that was just a great group of guys on that team, just seeing how they handled their business. And I learned a lot from that year, um, watching yeah. watching all those leaders um, take control mm. of the team and and kind of just and go with it. But um, the second one, like I just said, it, it's it's hard to put in words. It, it's still amazing to me. And and the fact that I've I've been a part of two of them is is even more unreal to me. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think we have to say, we'll, we'll say thank you again to you, Tate. Uh, I mean, like, you know, you, you mentioned like waiting so long and like, so for us, like, I mean, I know we're, we're experiencing it from a much different perspective than you are, but like, you know, something I was born in 1980. So like, I didn't remember it. Like, you know, like I was alive, but you know, I was a baby. Um, so it was for me, I grew up lifelong Georgia fan. So something I'd kind of like waited my life for, uh, so yeah, we we appreciate it. It's been it's been a heck of a it's been a heck of a ride. <laughs> yeah. I, I was born in eighty one, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was born in two thousand and one, so I was way ah. before, right before me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, we were we were. Hey, that was those were our days in Athens, Tate. So that's <laughs> that's that's when we were around on campus. I uh, love it. Um, all right, I got w- one more thing. Maybe if you have time, something that I I pick it up from your podcast. I thought we could make you feel a little bit at home with this tape. So if we do, you do your blind rankings. Okay. Could we blind rank Halloween candy? Let's go. I'm a. I'm a All right. I'm a huge Halloween fan. All right. So I entered <laughs> in a bunch of stuff and with like a spin the wheel kind of thing, so that I don't even t- totally know. So you can't see it right now. But so first one we got. Tootsie rolls, five. All right, JP, Not you want to you want to go five. with this too? Five. I agree. <laughs> I considered not even having that one in there. Now, now I'm, we're gonna see what else we got. Yourself. Yeah. All right, Milky Way. Ooh. Four. Go- <laughs> four for JP. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go four with that one too. Oh man, now I feel yeah, like my list think, if I'm like suboptimal. So if I put it on three, what would go at four? But I couldn't think of anything that would be. What would be better? Yeah. All right. All right. Next up, we're going to go with, we got Snickers. Ooh. I'm going to put it at two. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to go two. God, oh, Tate, you fit right in. <laughs> we usually agree on all of, all of the like over-unders <laughs> and things like that. <laughs> yeah, man. Now I'm like, I should have just come up with these on my own and not do the, uh, not do the spin the wheel. Um. All right, the last are, one. Those are pretty common Halloween candies you got as a kid, though. Yeah, they were. They were. All right, the last one that came up was the Reese's Pieces. Oh, that's number one. Number one. Okay. Okay. So we get a clean sweep. We can agree. <laughs> we, <laughs> Tate, you're fitting right in. We agree. We always make fun of each other because we agree on everything. <laughs> it, that was true. honorable mentions. Twix. Twix would be the real number one. Twix. Okay, so yeah. that is that is my number one. That was the thing is I didn't want to just throw mine in there. I put a, a broader spectrum and kind of like had get them got them a little randomly selected there. But uh, Twix, yeah. that is my go to. I would throw Kit Kat in there as well. Mm-hmm. We have a we have a bat. We already have like one bag of Halloween candy, and the Twix uh, magically disappeared somehow. I don't know what happened. Personally, there's there's never been a candy that I've turned down. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, is that your is that your fa- is that your favorite the the Twix? One hundred, definitely. Okay, so we got JD's the Swedish Fish guy. You're your Twix guy. Like what's Swedish, the- Swedish Fish is up there second, I think. Okay, 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 nice. If I, if nice. I go to a gas station, I'm either grabbing a, a Twix, um, Swedish Fish, and a Diet Coke. Usually, I've kind of gotten away from the Dr Pepper after everything happened. <laughs> uh, Understandable, healthy, but. <laughs> uh the the other thing the, the one last thing from from my perspective the, the hair has come up quite a bit right oh mm. yeah, yeah so what are you are you gonna are you just gonna keep this in perpetuity or until we don't win a national championship like what's going on um i think it might have to be gone after uh i get done here uh it's kind of actually i i got really close to cutting it off after the auburn game oh. uh, i i didn't play very well that game but I was I was just like I was just like mad that week. And one day I woke up and it was just everywhere. I was like, that's it. I'm calling my barber. Like I'm getting this cut off. Like I, was, I, was I think it was actually like the Monday after, knowing that I was about to have to go watch film, knowing it was gonna be a rough film session for me. Uh, 
it was kind of just like I woke up and I was like, I'm tired of it. It needs to be gone. But it, it, it's kind of stuck. I didn't I didn't think it would stay this long, but mm. it kind of stuck like is with me. So okay, I lied. So you mentioned you mentioned taking going into the into the the, the film session and I imagine what what you're alluding to there is the coaches, right? Like, what's what is it like to be on the on the on the brunt end of of a Kirby rage stroke? Um, it, it's really just knowing it's coming. <laughs> like, we're, like, especially in the offensive line room, we're sit, we're sitting there clicking plays, and like you remember the bad plays, and I uh, okay, had, I had two or three that game that were really bad, like ones that I'm like just still trying to forget, like just get out of my system, like I don't want everyone to think about those again. And then you just know it's coming. We're on the, we, it's like you start the drive that we're watching. We watch it. You're like, here it comes. And it's like the longest five minutes of your life just know it's coming. And then it comes up. You see the comment on there of what you did wrong. You just kind of look at uh, the coach and you're just like, here we go. <laughs> uh, man, I can't, I can't, I can't imagine. I can't imagine. I can't yeah. imagine. <laughs> See Jim. Uh, Jim just ghosts Kirby. You know that's that's what he does. He just he just gives him <laughs> he gives him the Irish goodbye. <laughs> I had an accidental thing where I thought I was taking up too much of Kirby's time. At this was when he was still at Alabama and we were at an event, and I like had this like feeling that like there was like a line forming behind me to like talk to him, and so I just kind of abruptly ended the conversation. It's like hey you know, coach, nice to meet you, good luck or whatever. And then I turned around, and there was like no one there, and I was like oh I feel like such an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that that's my uh that's my Kirby moment <laughs> uh hilarious uh well Tate we appreciate your time man um thanks so much for coming and hanging out with us and chatting it up with us a bit um where where can folks anything else you want to plug I know we've mentioned the show um but r- real talk um on YouTube is it, it, it is it just on YouTube that's where I've seen it um YouTube TikTok Instagram Twitter Okay. Uh, it's real talk on YouTube and real talk Georgia across everything else. Okay. Got it. Got it. I really appreciate y'all having me on. I had a really good time. Um, thank you, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. I could, I could talk to you. I could talk to you forever, but I don't <laughs> want to take up your entire evening. Cause you probably got to get to bed <laughs> got an early morning. Yeah, so. uh, well, well, Hey, uh, again, we'll say, we'll say thank you again. And, uh, congrats on a great season thus far it's crazy that it's already more than halfway through and uh best it's of luck for the rest of the season man that. it's flown by is it I, I assume it goes by it probably goes by even faster for you than us i can't imagine it's it's i feel like i just moved here yesterday it, wow. it's, it's like yeah. Coach Smart, where we it, i got told how many days i've been here the other day and it was like 1600 days wow or, no, man like 1300 something like that yeah and i was like wow like it, it's just kind of unreal to run real to think about. It's flown by, but, but hey, I mean, when, when I look, time, flies, time flies when you're having fun. Oh man, amen, amen. When I look at the media guide though, Tate, it says you're a red shirt sophomore, so you can you can do whatever you want, man. I've got, I've got a couple more years. I got a red shirt, COVID year. I could probably get a medical red shirt. I mean, yep. last year, if, if I expressed all of my eligibility, I'd be like I was like a freshman, right? <laughs> so that's unbelievable. That's awesome. You heard it here. Tate's coming back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank <you>. please. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we yeah. appreciate everything that you guys do. We know you dedicate your bodies and time and everything like that to like playing a game that we we all love and, and enjoy for the university. So, um, you know, we're we're big fans. We're big fans. This is this is as much like a fan a fanboy situation for Jim and I. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we really enjoy talking to you. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. y'all. Thank y'all. Hey, man, go dogs. Go dogs. Y'all have a good night. Thanks, man. You too. Well, that was Tate Ratledge, folks. Should I hit stop yet? <laughs> that was Tate. Man, I can't believe, like, uh, it's, I mean, I guess I always knew like, the, the amount of time that goes into those, uh, you know, their days, but you really don't appreciate the amount of effort it takes to be a D1 athlete at this level. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, man, I, uh, like he very, uh, I, okay. After like watching his, his podcast and everything, that's kind of what I figured it'd be like, but, um, super genuine, easy to talk to good kid. Yeah. Good kid. 
I think I, I scared him with the heads up on the, had the question from Patrick, but he, he was cool with it. He was cool with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think he was, he was excited to tell the Dr. Pepper story. I think so. <laughs> I think so. We probably should open with that. <laughs> I wonder, did he, has he, has he talked about that on the podcast? I'm guessing not probably, but. I haven't heard that one. I haven't okay. heard that one. I know he has mentioned the fact that he was a punter though. I, I would love to see the punter. Like, I would love to see him try to try to out punt Brett. Like, that would be a, that would be amazing content, Tate. <laughs> yeah, seriously, seriously. All right. Well, I think we can probably close this one out. More to come uh, with this collab between Oxia Time. I got a podcast, Classic City Collective. Um, this was a this was a a good way to kick us off, though, for sure. Agreed. Agreed. Hopefully, we can get the rest of the the Oxia Time ambassadors on with us and have some more of these uh you know we can clock in some more some more interviews absolutely love it all right i'll say it again go dogs john go dogs